In this video, we're going to look at the, we're going to expand on this combination between personality and culture. So the way I like to look at it is like this, because I've worked with a lot of data-driven people, people, you know, engineers, IT professionals, pharmacists, finance, accounting people, people for whom, well, numbers mean a lot. And I found that quantifying cultural differences was very helpful in order to understand what that means. So here's what we're going to do. As you look at this video, I would like you to think of the scale, because Cultural differences are all about instant choices. I want you to think of this scale and think of this. If you had to come to the screen to put an X on this scale that corresponds to the kind of manager you personally prefer, where would you put the X? So let me explain the scale. On the very left will be people who like freedom. Go west. That is all you want to hear from your manager. You'll figure out the rest. On the very right, we will have people who want very clear directions. We are driving to San Diego. It's going to take us several days. We're going to cross the border. You'll need your passport, some American money, food and clothing for the trip, book hotels along the way, check the car mechanical condition, check the weather forecast, make sure the tires are well inflated, and so on. So there are 10 positions. If you had to put an X, where would you put the X on this scale? Well, I've done the same thing around the world, and I've asked people to tell me the answer, which I have collected. And so what I've plotted on this chart are the normalized distributions. So normalized means the standard Gaussian curve that is used to grade students, you know, the bell curve, okay? Of re and all the respondents that I use to create this chart are employees of the big four. So by big four, I mean Ernst & Young, KPMG, Deloitte, and PricewaterhouseCoopers. They're all auditors. They're all between the age of 25 and 35 years old. They all have between three and eight years of experience. And most importantly, in my, in my opinion, they were all rated above average in their home country because no organization Send poor, sends poor performers overseas. It's way too expensive. And so these were all rated above average in their home country because they were sent on an expatriate assignment, either from their home country to Canada or the reverse. And that's how I got to ask them the question. So as you can see on this slide, we have the bell curve for Canadian auditors. British auditors, Indian auditors, South African auditors, Filipino, Mexican, Pakistani auditors. What does this chart mean? I'm going to make two fundamental points with this chart. The first one is you cannot judge a book by its cover. As you can see, the, the, uh, not every Canadian auditor likes the same kind of manager. There is a wide range in every culture. So you cannot go, ah, you're from the Philippines. Filipinos like clear directions, let me manage you this way. If you do this, what will you do? What will you end up doing? You will end up stereotyping people. And let me tell you, that is going to backfire big time. Fundamentally, what you're doing at that point is you're using information that may be valid at the group level, but it doesn't mean it applies to every single individual. So, on one hand, you cannot judge a book by its cover. There's a wide range of opinions in every group. But at the same time, you can all see that on average, and these are the critical words, on average, Filipinos, Mexican or Pakistani uh, likes, like more direction, like to receive more direction from their managers than the average Canadian or British employee. And we manage the way we want to be managed. So what does that mean? Well, the average Filipino, Mexican or Pakistani employee expects clearer directions from his or her manager than the average Canadian or British manager expects to give to his or her employee. So what does it mean? Well, what do you think happens if an employee is on the right and his or her manager is on the left? Well, this is a situation that happens quite frequently in Canada when a recent immigrant joins an organization because many immigrants who come to Canada today come from cultures that are significantly more hierarchical than Canada is. And so on average, 
their sense of hierarchy is stronger than the Canadian sense of hierarchy. So when an employee is on the right and his or her manager is on the left, what happens? Well, in many, many cases, the manager will write on the performance appraisal of this employee, lacks initiative, does not work independently, needs excessive hand-holding, not a self-starter. If you ask the employee to write the 360 feedback of the manager, what do they write? Well, very typically, what they're going to write is, this manager doesn't give good direction. Every time I go to my manager and I ask a question, the answer I get is, I don't know, you figure it out. How did this person become promoted? Where does the problem come from? Well, again, it comes from the way we have been educated. The template for the relationship between manager and employee in the workplace is usually the relationship between student and professor, either in high school or in undergraduate classes. So the, that relationship will be very different in different parts of the world. And so employees will expect very different things from their managers, just like managers will expect very different things from their employees. The reverse situation also happens in Canada. What if an employee is on the left and his or her manager is on the right? Well, in that situation, the employee will look at the manager as micromanaging, while the manager will look at the employee as a loose cannon. I have no idea what my employee is going to do today. So all this comes from the way we have been brought up. And so, again, the environment in which we have been brought up has a big impact on the way we think and communicate. One way I'd like everyone to remember this slide is like this. Culture is the average. Personality is the standard deviation. It's the breadth of the distribution. And we need to keep in mind both whenever we interact with people who are culturally different from us.